Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, this video today I'm doing is going to be about the mid-season 20, let's call it 2021 albums of the year. I'm kind of disbanding or abandoning the whole mid, the whole two-year thing cycle, even though I still believe in it. So, and I've talked about some of these albums already, so I'm just going to kind of go through it. So. And I posted this on Instagram, like it was like three or four weeks ago, and Facebook, um, and, and Twitter. So my list, number 17, Courtney Swain of uh, Bentney put out an album called Fountainhead, which I listened to like once, and it's kind of ambient, it's not typically resembling Bentney or even her last solo album, but it's interesting enough. Number 16, it's not an album, but more of like a split EP single. The band Vector have returned to a split with this band called Cryptosis. And the, tr the, the EP is called Transmissions of Chaos. Um, I don't know, there's like one or maybe two songs from Vector on there. Vector, they're kind of a progressive thrash metal band, modern progressive thrash metal band. Influenced by Voivod, among other bands, um, put out a bunch of really good records in like the late 2000s and 2010s. Um, but like almost all the band members left, except maybe the singer. I can't remember. Anyway, it's good to see them releasing music again, even though what's happened with their band is still up in the air. I think, but maybe this means that they're going to be putting more music out and new album out at some point. So number 15, Manchester Orchestra, The Million Mass of God. Um, I think the initial single I really liked, I can't even remember the name off the top of my head. And Manchester Orchestra can be kind of affiliated with the Deer Hunter fans to an extent because some of the members, Andy Hull, the lead singer from the Manchester Orchestra um, sang on the Red EP on the Color Spectrum, and also uh, they toured with them. The Deer Hunter, I think, in fact, opened for them. Anyway, they've gotten more popular, more success the last couple years the from their last record. So I like this album to an extent, but I have to admit that I'm kind of getting like a uh, a little bit of a um, um, what's it called? The, the band from Ireland that I kind of liked at one point that I'm not that into. I've kind of jumped ship on. Um, I can't even remember their name. But anyway, it's, I wouldn't call it hipster, but, you know, and that's the, not the reason why I kind of got, I felt it was kind of stale after listening to the whole record a couple times. Um, but anyway, Manchester Orchestra number 15. Number 14, Pat Metheny, Road to the Sun. Not as, from this place, the previous record I loved, very cinematic. This record he didn't even play on, but he composed it, I guess. But I haven't listened to it enough to really say I loved it. I love moments that I, that when I did listen to it. But um, at, the jury's still out on it to an extent. I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as the last record, but still not bad. Michael Nesmith, different drum, the loss of RCA... Lost RCA Victor recordings. Um, Mumford and Sons is the band I'm thinking of that the Manchester Orchestra album reminded me of. And I'm not a Mumford and Sons fan. I was briefly, and I kind of just they they their style kind of became a little bit of a one trick pony. And I ugh, I I got I got like a saccharine taste in my mouth from Mumford. Anyway, getting back to number uh, thirteen, the Michael Nesmith, mostly for the the Michael Nesmith Monkey Life or Wife. I've listened to some of this. Uh, one track sounds a lot like, uh, which we heard a few years ago, uh, the Grateful Dead's um, Truckin'. The rhythm and it's very similar. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just, I can't make a few more, a lot of comments on it. She has it, and the CD's downstairs actually. But um, Michael Nesmith, different drum, the lost RCA Victor recordings. Number 12, Besnar Lakes. Besnar Lakes are the last great thunderstorm warnings. Um, Besnar Lake studio albums have always been sort of sparse to me. Great live band. Um, I know a lot of people ra raved about this, and it's very kind of soundtracky. I think that I need to listen to it more. I sampled it on Spotify a couple months ago. So, the Rain and Kindle Wither EP they put out Wither, and I forget the other tracks that are on that. But um, Wither is a great track. Everything that Rain and Kindle does, I like. Um, but it's just an EP single, the single that they put out. It's on, it's on, um, Spotify, I believe. Um, I should know 
what else is on this because I'm on the Patreon. Let's see here. They uh, went, yeah, they, it's or was it Spotify or Apple Music? Maybe it was Apple Music because I didn't even know. What, Waiting on the Wind. I forgot about that because it has three songs on it, you know, and I should have mentioned that. Should have known that rather. Um, it's not just a single wither, but um, "Waiting on the Wind" is excellent. "Better Off Together" is another song, and "Stolen Treasure." So, actually, yeah, I'm I'm wrong about. There's no song called "Wither." For some reason, I thought there was. Anyway, "Stolen Treasure" had previously been released as a single, which is weird, but um, but it's just digital. It was just a digital like EP single. But anyway. We're waiting for the next uh, proper studio album from the Reign of Kindo. Hopefully it will happen at some point because they've released many songs over the last few years that didn't even make the last record going back before that. Uh, Happy However After. So, anyway, number 12, number 11. Number 10, Sympathetic Magic from Typhoon. Again, another, that's like the Besnard Lake song, which I've meant to listen to more and I've, I've sampled more or less. I love Typhoon. Well... Love might be a little strong, but I'm a, I'm a Typhoon fan for sure, and I have all their albums. Um, but this album is still kind of... I mean, I know I've, I've seen some of the fans talk about it, and I, I don't know with Lockdown and stuff if it was made in a similar fashion. I know the last album um, I liked, but it was a little... You know, not let down by, but a little... Um, I wasn't attached to it as much as some of the previous albums. Other Offerings, it was called, from 2018, I think it was. Because the chamber element, where the, the wall of sound, twenty-five member, twenty-five piece band, wasn't as prominent as the previous records, especially the one before that, White Lighter. But um, jury's still out. Exact, exact again. Number nine, uh, floating with chaos from Galactic Cowboy Orchestra. I believe I did a video talking about this, um, and it's you know kind of par for their course. It has a couple of covers. The was twenty-first century Skidoo Man by King Crimson, of course. Um, Jazz Crimes, and I Got It are probably my go-tos. Um, and Jazz Crimes is a co cover also. Uh, the, I think it's Josh Redmond. So, yeah, I talked about the ja Galactic Cowboy Orchestra, the four-piece, you know, not entirely, but mostly instrumental, progressive bluegrass jazz fusion band from the Twin Cities who the Prague scene got to know um, a few years ago, especially when they played Prague Day and maybe some other festivals out east. Number eight, Timmy Sean, A Tale from the Other Side, which was like in two parts. Came, some came out in 2020, and then the whole thing was released in 2021. And I, I really like a lot of this, although I will admit that I still need to listen to it more. But Timmy Sean, it's the first proper follow-up like of all new material he's done since his debut album back in 2010. Uh, the no, a Noise Water, Noise Water, something like that. Um... And this is more cinematic, but there's still a bunch of, like, catchy banger tracks and earworm tracks. It's a, like a double album. It sort of seems like it's a concept album based on, like, Tales from the Crypt or, like, 80s sort of, uh, like, thriller horror, um, you know. It has an 80s element to it very much so, but um, still has the power pop kind of, you know, symphonic elements that Timmy Sean's known for, um... So I, I, I like it. I don't know if it may go up with more time because I've only maybe listened to it three or four times. So uh, Number seven, Liquid Tension Experiment, Liquid Tension Experiment 3. It's awesome to see them back again after all these years. You know, the last proper album was over 20 years ago. I am liking it. I've listened to it like three times. The um, Rhapsody in Blue... Uh, <laughs> adaptation interpretation is probably the biggest highlight to me um it kind of falls between it sounds a little bit like petrucci's solo album from last year and dream like dream theater of course well you know of course jordan rudas and, and petrucci still are members of dream theater and of course portnoy used to be but um there was something very unique about the first liquid the first two Liquid Tension Experiment albums in 1998 and 1999 that distinguished itself from Dream Theater. Um, and I guess what prevents this album from being more addictive at this point for me is, I guess Jordan, I love it when Jordan used piano, but sometimes his, the patches, I've never been, I haven't been as enthused with the recent Dream Theater albums that Jordan Rudis has used those, those, those synth patches which he loved to go to. I, it wears thin with me at some point, but... It's not all over this album. I mean, it's it. I guess I could say I, I'm not 
down about this record, but I'm not enthused about it. So that's why it's it would be probably higher. And I've li like I've only listened to it like three or four times. So, but uh, Liquid Tension Experiment number th uh, Liquid Tension Experiment three number seven. Number six, the Stephen Wilson album, The Future Bites. I listened to this maybe four times when it first was available on Spotify and everything like that. And the the, not the title track. Um, and of course, I always will think of this album with his podcast because he played clips from, I think it was the title track or 12 um, Steps. I don't have the track list in front of me. Um, let me pull it up. But um, I like this album. I You know, the fact it's different or how different it is doesn't really bo bother me um and i know elton john of course appears on the, the the voiceover on you know it's like it's been probably two and a half three months since i've listened to it what is it personal shopper which was the first single i think he released last year in 2020 um but as my wife says that that track should be in the clubs um the long full version of it um Twelve things I forgot. I'm thinking of. Uh, I think that's the one that has that little string, you know, little motif at the beginning that he played constantly as like between segments of his podcast. But uh, that track, I think it's that one. It's one of the other ones. It might be King Ghost or Man of the People. I forget. But um, twelve things I forgot specifically. I remember <laughs> because it reminds me a lot of Lazarus uh, from Porcupine Tree's Dead Wind album. But it's very catchy, very memorable, so... Um, I don't know, I need to listen to this a little more to see where it stands, because I, I think the last time I listened to it was like mid-April, so... Um, but uh, Stephen Wilson's Future Bites, number six. Number five, Subterranean Masquerades put out their third album in like six years. A Mountain Fever. Doesn't have Paul Core. he's not singing on it. He wasn't on the last record either. Um, the former uh, lead vocalist who did a lot of the sort of extreme growling and, and clean vocals with Subterranean Masquerade. But, you know, and the thing is, that the last two records, the previous record, Vagabond from 2017, I think it was, had a lot of elements of, like, this, you call it, Middle Eastern, or, uh, not, Middle Eastern, ethnic, um, acoustic, folk, <sighs> moving on about uh, Subterranean Masquerade. So, this album... I can't help but think it does sound a fair amount like Orphan Land, because I know some of the members are from Orphan Land. I mean, um, Tomer Pink is the, you know, sort of the main songwriter, composer from Subterranean Masquerade. has been since its inception back in the mid-2000s. And I, I did a video, you can look at my history, I did a video about Subterranean Masquerade. So, but um, I like this album. It's getting a, a fair amount of buzz, more than I would have expected. And, um... Snake Charmer, I think, is one of the songs. That's the opening track. Um, and I mean, I, I was kind of... I don't say I was blowing it off, but I was um, a little bit concerned about the fact, you know, without Paul Kaur still, you know... You know, and this is their third album. They, you know, they put out um, The Great Bazaar in 2015. The third album in, like, six years. You know, um, but I mean, as a fan, it's good to have that. The title track is good. It, it, it really, I mean, one of the reviews on Rate Your Music said, talked about how it doesn't have a bad track, and I, you know, I can't disagree with that. There's some moments that are a little bit extreme. The, the vocal style, they have, it's only one singer, I guess. Um, just looking at it on, on the Bandcamp page and everything like that. I mean, I'm tempted. I, I might order it. I might buy it because I'm I'm liking it enough. Um, yeah. Let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Recorded, but between goal and no, that's just when it when it was recorded. The Bandcamp page doesn't actually even tell the uh, the membership, but um, yeah, people on Rate Your Music are really liking this. Um, but to say that it resembles like uh, suspended animation dreams. Even parts of <clears throat> The Great Bazaar, I mean, about halfway, I think they've kind of reinvented their sound to an extent. I remember we I got a, like a pretty epic email from them a few years ago talking about how they felt like a band instead of a project, and they did some live dates and everything, but, um, man, I, uh, does it, it doesn't give me, it doesn't give me, I, I want to, I want to credit the name <laughs> of the singer, um, Let's see here. Let's just go to Rate Your Music. Because I know people are talking about him. It, he's, I think he might be from... 
Might be from Israel like Tomer. I could be wrong on that, but um, they don't give it. I gotta, I gotta basically go to the, the front page. Gel Nordus, which yeah, so he's been in the band since 2014. So he he probably was even on the Great Bazaar, but um, yeah, um, but yeah, I, I you know I I'm not saying I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. And they did a, an album last year, The Pros and Cons of Isolation, which I didn't listen. to. I think it was a bunch of covers or like covers or um, like reinterpretations of some of their other songs, but. Um, it's not too long. You know, the last two songs have a lot of symphonic elements, you know, and you have, like, the ethnic kind of acoustic instrumentations that, that you've, you know, like I said, Orphan Land. It reminds me, it's like, well, I'm trying to distinguish between this and Orphan Land. It doesn't have the singer Kobe from Orphan Land, but, um, yeah. So, you know, Mountain Fever from Subterranean Masquerade, number five on my list. Um, number four, uh, Godspeed, You Black Emperor. <laughs> God's P at State Sands. It's not exactly the most uh, pleasant. Uh, <laughs> but that's kind of par for the course for Godspeed with some other titles. And they put, like, explanation point. And they do... They, I don't know. Um, it definitely, again, didn't surprise me, given their history. But at the same time, you know, with Godspeed, they put out... This is, like, their fourth album in, like, eight years. A little bit like Subterranean Masquerade. And after having, a, like, a long hiatus. But... Um, it's a little more consistent than some of their other recent records to me because there isn't a lot of doom and sort of dragging kind of noise elements on on uh, this album. Uh, let's just see here. I mean, with a, with a title like that, I was a little skeptical. I mean, again, they've had some weird titles before, but um, well, my, my connection's not working right now. But as far as, you know, it's, it's like four pieces, I, if I recall. And so it it never overstays its welcome. So that's part of the, you know, good part of it is that why it's worth listening to more and often than just kind of feeling like it's a chore to get through. But, you know, my internet's not cooperating right now, so I can't really even cite specifics on it. But yeah, it's, it's like... It's all instrumental. It's post-rock. It's Godspeed. If you know Godspeed, you're Black Emperor. If you don't know them, well, it might not be the first album to listen to, but it, you probably wouldn't be repulsed by them so much if you enjoyed even moments of it. Then um, some of the the stuff with the drone, that's the word I'm... The drone and the doom element. Not so much doom, but drone. The drone elements they've used off and on with some of their more recent records have sort of been skippable tracks, and there's not much drone on this record. So, uh, anyway... So, number three, the two R's EP, The Bell of Fall and Right Here, Right Now, which I'm a little loving. Um, and in some ways, I almost love more. But then number two, of course, I've talked about the self-titled Hours album. Still, my go-to track is Get That Feeling, the last track. But, I mean, you know, I've, I've listened to this enough times. I've kind of digested it to know that it's a sweet, it's a three-part record in that sense, almost like like a microcosm of the three albums is the third of a trilogy. Uh, the previous two, Ballet, The Boxer, and um, New Age Heroine. But, um, yeah, our, our self-titled album, not their best album necessarily. Their longest album, though, it's 18 tracks but um, and 77 minutes. But it it's pretty consistent. Um, the title track, or the previous title track, Spectacular Sight's a highlight. Don't Lose Yourself, Across the Clouds is a favorite, uh, Eyes, as I mentioned in the review I did, Gold, I like, um, From Where You Are is, is, is epic, you know, so, and so, number one, what a surprise, Kevin Gilbert's release, the state release, Call Me Kai, which, in the last uh, few days, I've revisited basically the whole thing, and it's four albums in effect, but I guess I see it maybe more so as just one large collection of songs from 1985 to 1987 that he did. Um, and, like, a couple tracks that I've kind of warmed up to more so after hearing them more, one being Goodbye L.A., which I remember hearing that. That's that's a really catchy, almost power-pop tune. It's a poppy tune. It's got the horn, kind of playful horn section that sounds something from, like, the 60s. Um, almost like... Uh, the Beatles, um, Your Mother Should Know, I think it is. Yeah. And it, he has a song off the the Nuts compilation, 
finally over you kind of rem reminds me of or has similar elements although i think that song was probably written before it but i mean i guess the thing i have done specifically with these four records i can sort of rank them or compare them Point Blank and Sometimes Why, or Sometimes Why is probably my favorite overall. And it, that has the, the Tired Old Man suite the, with the sort of electronic, you know, bridge, which is really cool and catchy. Um, and, um, but until I get her back, God's been tapping my phone, Image Maker, even though it's like one of three versions. Another Day, Never Say Never, uh, Living in the U.S., I mean, it's... I don't know, you know, that's my favorite. Then Point Blank from 87, that was 86 sometimes, why? Point Blank 87 is kind of um, probably the number, the fun I like the second most has some soundtracky piece. It's got Goodbye LA, it's got Staring Into Nothing. Uh, one of the early, there are two different versions on this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, I think. <laughs> Maybe not, because the track list. Anyway, that Staring at Dan, Donna Ray, that's another catchy tune, but Staring at Nothing ended up on Streaming of the True. Um, I, th I want to say it was on another one of his records, but um, but yeah, Nightmares was on a soundtrack. <clears throat> so it's a mixed bag uh, from 84 to 87. Probably has even more soundtracky kind of, you know, elements. Um, and it has the last track, Sail Away, which doesn't even have... It's not Kevin actually singing, it's his brother Chris, as I came to learn. It sounds a lot like Alan Parsons from Alan Parsons Project. And, but, um, and then Decent Exposure, the, the, the first one he put out basically after he finished high school or his first year of college, um, sounds the most like NRG, I think, but there's some... Circling Winds is a track that I think maybe he re-recorded, did a different version of that ended up on, the, I think it was on Bolts. 2009, so I'm familiar with that one. Yeah, and then Staring Into Nothing's on that one. So there's two versions of Staring Into Nothing on Decent Exposure and on Point Blank. So three versions total if you count the shaming of the true version. But then that, that the Decent Exposure has the Rain Suite, which probably would be my go-to. That and then Welcome Home, which I think was also a giraffe track. He brought to giraffe and they re-recorded. So. But yeah, I mean, it's 47 songs from my favorite musician. Is it a perfect mix? Do I love every song on this thing? Uh, Call Me Kai? No. And so I'm, I'm of the belief probably if something comes along this year that I'm really going to get attached to or just blown away by, like Pepe Deluxe's new album coming up uh, in November. Was it November, October? Um, you know, this, the, what is it? Uh, the suitcase, not suitcase. I should, I, actually, I should bring that up. That That's a potential, that would be a potential... Um, new album that would, you know, and there's a lot of other stuff that are coming out. Uh, let's see if my internet's back. Yeah. Um, why am I struggling with this? The Phantom Cab, the Phantom C Cabinet. I gotta remember that name. Volume 1. The Phantom Cabinet. So, yeah, Phantom Cabinet would be certainly one that, that's my most anticipated for sure. And then I'll just transition this part of the video into that. So what exactly um, else is coming out that I'm anticipating? It's, um, if my internet wants to work, because at the top of my head I can think of, I mean there's bands, Dredge has worked on an album for a few years now, that would be a huge deal for me. The, there's Marillion who have been working in the studio, they have Definitely, they posted on YouTube some you know stuff about the new album being more energetic, more upbeat. But um, as far as confirmed dates, you know, and I, I, I can't think of them on top of my head. And I should be able to. Uh, um, well, you know what I'll probably do because you know, like I said, I'm not getting the cooperation from my my internet connection upstairs here. I'll do a separate video about that soon. So. Um, because yeah, there's there's still some potential. I mean, we don't know with the conditions of everything and money and you know what the state. I know Team Me is another band that's been working on. They've been posting videos and stuff. They they have and Small Leaks Sink Ships. So a lot of my favorites, a lot of my sort of recent um, you know discoveries and stuff like that. Recent discoveries, recent um, attachments have been putting up stuff about suggesting there's new albums coming. Some of them have titles, of course. Gospel mentioned an album back in 2019, so a comeback album. So I'll have to do that, but thank you for watching. Uh, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.
I'll just piggyback on that and just um, finally pulled up the, the anticipation list just to kind of go through this. So, yeah, the number one release for sure for me that, that's going to be, that's been confirmed right now is Pepe Deluxe's Phantom Cabinet Volume 1. I love them. The first last album came out in 2012, Queen of the Wave. It was one of my second favorite record of the 2010s. That's enough said with that. But, um, yeah, and there's definitely stuff that I haven't listened to that has come out that, you know, like this King Gizzard record. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, which they, this is like their 12th album um, in <laughs> how many years? Nine years or eight years or something like that. But Paradigm Blues Transist just came out. Paradigm Blues, prog rock band uh, from like, I want to say North Carolina, somewhere in the southeastern part of the country, or Atlanta maybe. Um, they uh, they put a really cool cover back in the early 2000s of Rush's Bravado and... Um, and you know, they they kind of like never went completely gone, but um, Transist is their first album maybe since then. So, and I've listened to some samples, and it sounds good. It sounds like modern prog, which is I'm picky about, but uh, you know, if overall I like what I hear, I need to listen to it though. It's on Spotify, but yeah, there's a band called A Formal Horse. I want to thank Lorenzo from Alt Prog Core introduced me just a few days ago. Uh, they have two tracks from it. Uh, their second album called Meat Mallet's coming out on July 23rd. That I need to listen to those songs in their first record more. But um, they have a female singer, and it's sort of doomy, but not like Black Sabbathy elements. But it's there's a prog element for sure. Um, and she's a really good singer, and some of the guitar tones. And I don't know. I'm very curious about this band, Formal Horse. So um, that would be probably toward the top of my list for anticipations that are confirmed confirmed that haven't come out yet so there's a george harrison 50th anniversary of all things must pass um neil morris band instance in danger i'm kind of passing on neil morris of course so let me just kind of cherry pick some of the titles that might come out like i mentioned there's team me and um Team Me and uh small league sing shifts we don't have titles the family crest album the war act 2 I would love to come out. We pre-ordered it back in 2019, so I don't know what the status of that, but when it comes out, it's going to be a big deal. I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, it could be this year. Hopefully, it'll be this year. Um, <laughs> Sculpture, the liminal phase. At least Sculpture is using more of their social media, but that thing's been almost 10 years in the making. The last Sculpture album came out in 2008. It's Donnie Anderson from um, Agalock's side project that's more prog rock, um, but with samples and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, whenever it comes out, I want to check it out for sure. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it's really, there's not a lot of confirmed titles that are like, you know, Di Diablo Swing Orchestra, Swagger, and Stroll Down the Rabbit Hole, A Dying Planet, When the Skies Are Gray. Of course, The Deer Hunter is the Indigo Child. I kind of think that, you know... Casey wants to put out something more. The honorary astronaut was something he was really happy with, and I know he's going to probably do more music under that name. But and Gavin Castleton um, recently departed the Deer Hunter, so I don't even know if he'd be on this record. But he's been working on the Indigo Child, which is partly to do with the film. It's going to go with the film more so. Um, so that obviously is a major release whenever it comes out. But I, it's been. They have, they're going to do some shows in Ohio, so I don't know. The odds of it coming out this year are probably not that good. I, I, would, I would think 2022, but you never know. Um, New Villagers Suite, I haven't gone to their Facebook page in a long time, but you know they put out a couple songs back in 2019, and they, it was labeled Sweet, but I don't know what the status on that is. Shelter Red's but Beast of the Field. Um, Shelter Red, the post-metal band from, uh, I want to say, Portland. Yeah, no, when it, whenever it comes out, I'll be interested in checking out. The Polyphonic Spree, Salvage, Enterprise, Oddland, Vermilion. Um, so that's the more or less the extent of titles. But then there's the potential, of course, with some of these bands and albums. Um, Major Parkinson, Mayor Hawthorne. He's working on new music, I know. For, Act 4 from Never Ending White Lights. Maybe this is the year. I'd, I'd be happy just getting one song from Daniel Victor at this point, but... Um, uh, whenever Act 4 comes out Pan Salvation may put out another album after Panther from 2020 because I know that Daniel had written and maybe even recorded some music that didn't make that album 
The next Reign of Kindo, uh, the Reign of Kindo album, they put out the Wither EP, but Wither and Bloom is a possible title. That's one thing I just asked on social media. That was a couple months ago. And then they have the, the music. It's a matter of how they want to put it out, and they're going to press it on vinyl and stuff. And Small League Sync Ships, like I mentioned, and Team Me, those are huge deals if they come out. Tears for Fears, the long-awaited record. has been like over almost 20 years, 15, more than 15 years since their last record. Team Me, uh, Vonavi, the number one, my number one record um, from 2019 was his debut album. Um, definitely am interested. It's kind of ambient. I wouldn't call it post rock exactly, but um, ambient music was sort of. And he'll have Run Rivers from uh, the uh, of Stateless or formerly of Stateless. Maybe do some vocals again. It would be great. And he'll have other singers, I'm sure. Zero Hour. Um, let's see. And then there's stuff like Image and Heap, The Tea Party. I mentioned Dredge, Carnival, and actually it's weird to it's weird to say this, but Porcupine Tree, you know, because they've been using social media, looks like Dredge, and I know Stephen Wilson said another another album could come out someday when you least expect it. So, but you know, it could you could say that now it could be three or four years from now, who knows? Um, and I know I'm pretty sure both uh, Archive and King's X and Warpaint, all three of those bands are going to put out albums at some point soon, but they're going to be probably next year. The King's X album is done, I guess, but it's not going to be out till next year. They want to promote it, and I think COVID, they're waiting for COVID just basically to be so <laughs> minimal so they can promote it. So anyway, um, just curious what you might be anticipating the rest of the year and what are your favorite albums? You know, I didn't mention a few names like Muse, um, Kimbra, oh yeah, she mentioned like two albums, potentially. Cloud Cult is another one, Childish Japes, Love the record from a few years ago. Between the Buried and Me, you know. So there's a lot of stuff that's still going to come out. It's really going to be depending on how they want to release it and how, you know, everything that's happened over the last year and a half is affecting things. But um, in the short term, at least there's some stuff coming out. Um, but I'm happy that we got some stuff. The Pepe Deluxe thing is really my, my sort of centralized... You know, I don't know. Maybe this album from... Um, from uh, it's coming out in July. Well, the formal horse could be the sleeper that I'm looking for. I did get introduced to another band from Lorenzo called Lakes, who have an album out in July also. So, uh, Start Again, who are sort of like a chamber pop folk, whatever. I don't know how to describe them. They almost remind me of Everything Everything, but they don't have as, as much of the quirky elements, but they have a large group of musicians. So, um, but they're definitely sort of like a hipster. They, they have the aesthetic of, like, the Pitchfork crowd to an extent, but there's also the Shaming of the True vinyl, which, box set. That, I mean, given the choice between the Pepe Deluxe and that, I'm not sure which one I'm more excited for, but... So, but thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give it a like, and I'll see you next time.